So I've got a couple of things that I did go over briefly last week, but I'm going to uh, address them again uh, this week just because I think they fit better with the other series of topics I've got here. But all of the stuff that I've got under this week is essentially going from, okay, we understand the structure of WordPress and how to use it as a content management system, as a blogging platform. And these topics are all about how to essentially break out of the blog, how to take it from something that looks like a blog to something that looks more like any other kind of website, in our case, a portfolio website. So the first topic here is uh, creating a static front page. Uh, I did briefly go over this last week, but I'll just reiterate it and demonstrate again. So just to recap, this is what my site looks like from where we left off last week. I have added a, a little bit more content uh, just so that I don't have to uh, go through that uh, right now, but it's essentially, other than that, uh, unchanged since last week. So the default home page, as you recall, will list all of your posts in reverse chronological order. But you can set a different uh, page to be your home page. And the way that you do that is through the admin section and the settings and then the reading section of the settings. So you can see the default option here is for the front page to display your latest posts. But alternatively you can select it to show any one of the pages that you've created as well. So for example here I can select uh, the front page to be a page that I've created called home page. And optionally, I can select another page if I want the blog post to appear on that as well. Though I'm not going to do that in this example. So as soon as I've done that, okay, the home page, so the default URL, will link to the page that I've specified. And if I go and look in my pages section, there's my home page there. Okay, and there's the content of my page. And so if I want to edit the content on the home page, all I have to do is, is uh, come back here and, and edit this uh, page post. And update. Okay, so um, I know just from the, some of the designs that I've seen people working on so far, uh, a lot of people want to use their home page as, as either an about page or sort of a resume page or even uh, something more like a, a splash page if it's particularly visual portfolio. Uh, so you can use all of those options uh, you can implement using this method. Um, Now, as I demonstrated last week, I, you could make your um, blog section come off another page, but uh, I also uh, showed, I'll just recap, I showed an alternate way of uh, having a separate section for your blog. The, the issue with creating a, a static page to house all of your blog posts is that it's going to get every post from every category which is something that you probably don't want. If you'd rather just have a category specifically for blog posts, then you can uh, easily just create a category called blog, and then whichever, uh, whichever post you want to be your blog post, you simply uh, put them in that category, and they'll appear on when you go to the category blog. So if you recall at the end of last week I added this link to the blog category here, okay, and it just outputs any of my posts that I've put in the blog category so that I don't end up having any of my portfolio content output as my blog. So that way I can keep my portfolio content separate and still have a blog where I put legitimate blog posts in a, in a category like that as well. Okay, so there's, I've got a link there to documentation, so there's much more info on that if you want to look into that in more detail. 
The other thing which I did briefly touch on last week, uh, but I didn't actually have any notes up about, was changing your uh, URL structure. So the default way that WordPress forms its URLs is by using query strings. So question mark and then a series of variables and then a, a series of values. So for example here this is saying uh, get me all posts that have a category ID of 11 and 11 will be my blog post. And so that's how WordPress knows which content to output on a particular page. Uh, likewise Okay, if I go to any of these other categories, then you can see the category number changes there. Okay, and it outputs the appropriate content. So, there's a couple of issues. Well, technically there's nothing wrong with that, and, and you could leave it like that if you want, but uh, we, can, we can make those URLs uh, a bit more user-friendly, uh, both in terms of making more semantic sense to the user so so I'd, I'd rather have if I if, if I'd rather than having a category ID here actually have it say something like the name of the category that makes a bit more sense a bit more obvious where I'm navigating to um, so in terms of the the user experience and then also for um, search engine friendliness SEO search engine not search engine optimization, uh, if you've got names, if you've got your URL named in a way that reflects the content then uh, it's generally considered to improve your search results as well. So it's not very hard to do, uh, we can do this by changing the permalink settings. So WordPress calls the URLs to any piece of content uh, a permalink. So you can see if I, I click on this single post, then you can see it's going key equals 96. So it looks at post the ID of 96. So this, perm, this, this URL here is what WordPress refers to as a permalink. So a permanent link to any bit of content that WordPress has. So we have the option to change the permalink structure by going into the admin section, settings, and permalinks. Okay, and you've got a few predefined options here that you can choose from. You can see the default one that's set now is what it looks like here with the query strings. Uh, and you can see we can change it to stuff with the date um, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so for example, this one here, and you'll see if I, I click on any of these, it will, will list down here how WordPress actually it interprets the permalink structure. So you can make your own custom structure and and if you want to know the full list of these sort of names that you can use then there's a link here to all of the different tags that you can use. Okay so you can see all of the tags when you specify them you just put them in between percentage signs and that's how um, WordPress understands them. And so you've got a whole lot of options there. So one of, the, one of the methods I like to use is to have the URL go uh, the, the site address and then forward slash the category name and then forward slash the post name. So that I can see just by looking at the URL that I'm in this category and I'm looking at this post. So in order to set it up like that, all I need to do is come down here and select a custom structure. Okay, and I'm going to type in uh, percentage sign category, percentage sign, and then forward slash, and then percentage sign post name. Okay, and I'll save that. Oops. Right, let's go back there for a second. Okay, so I've saved that. Now, at this point, you may notice that it will give you an error saying that uh, it was unable to write to your HT access file or something. 
something along those lines. Uh, if you get that error, there's detailed instructions on how to fix that on the, the link, on, on this using permalinks link that I've got here on my blog. Okay, as you can see, the troubleshooting for that is uh, quite long, so I'm not necessarily going to go through all that now, but as I said before, if you do run into that um, problems, I'm happy to help you with that. Essentially, the error that you will get will say that WordPress is trying to put this little bit of text into a file on your web server, but it doesn't have permissions to write to that file, and that's, that's all the error is. So um, essentially all you need to do is either make that file writable or manually put in that text into that particular file yourself. So I won't necessarily go through all the details of that now other than to say that the solutions for all that troubleshooting is on this link and I can also help you uh, with that if you run into that problem. Okay, so I've set my permalink structure like that. So if I go back to my uh, blog now and I go to my homepage, okay, that's no different because it's just the base URL. But now if I go to uh, a particular section of my site, okay, you can see that it now reads in a more sort of human friendly readable way. So I can see that I'm in the category blog and then photography, graphic design, programming. Okay, and if I, if I click on any one of these posts in here, okay, so I'll do that again so it's a bit more obvious what I did. Okay, let's say let's say I click on this post here. Okay, I'm in a single post now, and so it's giving me uh, that full link uh, that I specified. So the category name and then a forward slash and then the post name itself. So you can you can modify that to be essentially any structure that you want using any of those tags that are specified in that, that help file. Okay, so on to some new stuff. Uh, this is something that uh, I poss possibly intended to mention last week, but I didn't get around to it. Um, but these next couple of things are going to be extra parts of the template. So, so far we've looked at things like the default index template, the header template, the sidebar template, and the footer template. So the next template file that I want to show you is the single post template. So when we're looking at a category, it will list all of the posts in a particular category. But if we click on a link, on a permalink to any individual one of these posts, okay, then it's displaying just the post by itself. Now, we don't at the moment have a specific template file to tell it how to output a single post. So what it's doing is defaulting back to the default index template. So you can see that the layout of a single post and a uh, entire category looks exactly the same because they're both using the index.php template file. But it's possible that I may want to uh, output my single post differently to uh, my list of posts. So I can do that by creating a single post template file. So again, I've got a link to some documentation here. If you want to look at it in more detail, but it's really quite easy. All I, all I need to do is make sure that I name my single page template file uh, single.php. So I'm going to create a new file here and call it single.php. Okay, and I'll start by just copying my index template. And I could change whatever I want about this, um, but all I'm going to do for now is just get rid of the sidebar. So all I'm going to do is remove this part of the template file which includes the sidebar. Okay, so now when I click on a link to a single post, it should output almost exactly the same as the index uh, index template, except it just won't include the sidebar. So let's try that. I'll go back to my homepage. 
let's go to my blog okay so I'm on my blog okay that's using the index template if I click on a single one of these posts okay you can see it must have worked because it's no longer outputting my sidebar so what WordPress is basically doing is it's looking at the URL and it's going okay you, you want to look at a single post I'm going to look for in order to output this I'm going to look for a template file called single.php and if that doesn't exist I'm just going to use the default index.php um, template to output this and that's the way that all of these extra add-on template templates work so there's more specific and then more generic templates and so what WordPress will do is look for the most specific type of template and if it doesn't exist it'll keep looking back for less specific templates and eventually it will default back to the index template if it can't find anything more specific. So that's how you can have an entire WordPress theme that just uses the index template because every single page, if it can't find a more specific template for that particular piece of content, is just going to go, okay, I'll just render it using the index template. Okay, and just to reiterate, the important thing here was that I named it exactly this, single.php. So WordPress, when you're linking to a single post, is going to look for a template file called single.php. So if I name that something else, <coughs> if I rename this, So I just put an underscore at the beginning. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, let me just rename it in here. Okay, here it is. There's my single.php file. Rename it just by putting an underscore underneath it. As soon as I do that, if I refresh this page, okay, you can see WordPress hasn't found a file called single.php, so it's just reverting back to rendering this content with the index template. So it's very important that for certain template files that you, you name them the correct way. So I'll change that name back. Okay, and now it's rendering it using the single page template again. Okay, um, okay now at this point I'm actually going to jump down a little bit and then I'll come back to these other two because I want to mention at this point this WordPress body class here. So I've got my single I've got my single post outputting without the sidebar in this template but I've still got an issue where I've got that blank space there for the sidebar and if I want to look at why that is okay it's going to be because Okay, I can see there's no sidebar div output in here, but if I look at my main content and I look at my styles, I can see that I've got a style here that is making my main content div uh, a width of, of 70%. So it's always going to display it as 70% width whether or not there's a sidebar there or not. So I have two options to get around this. Obviously, I need to change the styles for this particular part of the template. So I have two options for this. I can go into my um, <clears throat> and go into my single.php file. Okay, and I can change my main content. Maybe I change my main content uh, div ID to be main content hyphen single. And then I go into my style.css and <clears throat> All right, let's not do it that way. Let's do it sort of way that's a bit more flexible. Let's add a class here that says 
um, no sidebar. Okay, and then I can come over here to my style sheet and I can say, well, main content dot no sidebar. And I can set the width to 100%. Okay, and because this is a more specific style than this general main content one here, then the width setting for my main content with class no sidebar is going to override this 70% width on main content. So that's one way that we can do it. Another way that we can do it is we can leave the uh, we can leave that div as it is, and we can take advantage of this thing called the WordPress body class to then target that particular main content div in the context of. Uh, this single post layout. So what the WordPress body class is, it's essentially a, a function like a lot of the other WordPress functions that we've had which you put uh, inside your opening body tag and it will just output a whole bunch of CSS classes which you can then use to target uh, styles on that particular page. So that makes a lot more sense when you see it in practice. So again, here's a link to the body class here. Uh, it's a very simple little bit of code and before I add it, okay, so I'm just reverting those changes that I did. Before I add it, I just want to show you, oh, in fact, I forgot to unadd it. So let me get rid of it there. Okay, so this is what my header did look like and you can see if I inspect any of my template files, there's my opening body tag. Okay, it's just an opening body tag, it has nothing else. What I'm going to do is, so if I wanted to add classes to this body tag, I'd add classes like this. Okay, that's how I would do it if I was just typing out the static HTML. But what I'm going to do instead is, instead of writing this out, I'm going to put this little PHP call here to the WordPress function body class. Okay, and you can see once I've done that, and I refresh the page, okay, now my body has, now WordPress has output a whole bunch of classes here, which essentially identify what type of content this, this page is. So you can see here that it's, this is a single page, and so it's output classes like seeing the single post, so I put the post ID. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to style a specific, a specific post in a certain way, I could use that in order to target it. Okay, and all of these other, all of these other um, classes that might be useful. And you'll see that that changes depending on the uh, section of the site that I'm in. So if I go to a particular category, okay, you can see it's output classes like category, and then also the name of the category itself. So if I want to style different categories differently, I can do that as well. So what I'm going to do then, if I want to style my single post now without actually changing the template, the name of the div in that template file, is I can say I can target the main content div that's underneath a body with a class of uh, single. So what I'm going to do is go into my uh, style sheet now, and instead of having this style here, what I'm going to do is say, okay, any any page which has a uh, a body with a class of single, then any element underneath that that has the ID of main content then let's sit, set the uh, width to 
and because I no longer have a sidebar, I don't need to float it anymore either. So I'm going to uh, uh, cancel the float that I had on it, and also clear the float from the sidebar above, uh, from the navigation bar above, and so that the uh, floated content that I'm going to have within is all uh, visible. I'm going to set the overflow to auto. Okay, so I'm just adding a few extra styles there, but the main important one is that I'm setting the width of this now to 100%. So again, because this is a more specific rule than the general main content one, this width setting is going to get overwritten, and also this float setting is going to get overwritten as well. And I should be able to see that uh, by looking at the before and after effect of uh, this main content div here. So I can see over on the right hand side in Firebug here the styles that are being applied. We can see that uh, it's just the main content style here and that uh, the width of 70% is being applied. If I refresh the page now, and I look at the main content div again. Okay, I can see that now the style that's being applied is this single main content one. Okay, so there's my body with the class of single, and then somewhere underneath there's my div with the ID of main content. And now this more specific style is being applied, including the width being set to 100%. Okay, and if I were to go back to any other section, so let's say back to my blog section, and I inspect the main content again. Now, my blog section body doesn't have a class of single, so that more specific style is not being applied. So it reverts back to the, the generic, uh, or the, the more generic way of styling main content. So I can apply this to any of my other template files, which you'll see that I'll do. Um, so later on, if I want to have any of these categories also output without a sidebar, which I will do, then uh, I can target the body class of a category or even a specific category in the main content underneath and style it any way I want. And you could use this same technique to change anything about the styles. You could change the background color of different categories, um, fonts, anything, any of the CSS that you want you could change by targeting these different uh, different body classes that WordPress provides for you. You'll notice you get one on the home page called home. So if you want to target specific styles to the home page, you can do that as well. Okay, so that's that's um, quite powerful and uh, as I said, there's, there's lots more um, detail on the body class on the WordPress documentation you can look through uh, at your leisure. So that's the, the single post page. So now we've created a template which outputs the uh, single post in a different way to how it outputs everything else. So now I'm going to show you uh, two more types of more specific templates. So the first one I'm going to show you is uh, page templates. So we can actually create different templates for each different page. So you might have a bunch of different pages, uh, and you might want to you might want to style them very differently. So you might want to create different template files for those pages. So the way that we create page templates is actually slightly different uh, from almost all the other template files. Um, <coughs> And page templates are actually the only ones that are selectable in the admin section. So when you create a page template, when you create a page and you've got page templates, you actually get a little drop down menu which allows you to select the template for the page. So uh, essentially, Essentially, to create a page template, uh, all you need to do is create a again a new PHP file in your theme directory. Okay, and 
Page templates are the odd one out. WordPress doesn't actually care what you call page templates. Uh, so you can call it whatever you want, uh, but it'll still be useful to call it something that, that makes sense. So let me just try it. Okay, so page, I'm gonna call this, so again, I'm gonna create a, I'm gonna create a page template that again has no sidebar. So again, you could change these templates in any way that you want, but just so this is quick and simple, I'm just gonna create these templates with no sidebar. So I'm gonna call this page underscore template underscore no sidebar. Um, dot PHP. Okay, and again, just to be quick, I'm going to uh, copy and paste from my index page. And again, I want it to be essentially the same as my index page, but just without the sidebar there. Okay, but with page templates, we have to do one extra little step. So this is recognized. So if I do this first, if I just leave this as it is here, then I actually have no way of assigning a template to a particular page. So if I look in my backend section uh, at all of my pages, uh, let's say I take, let's go to this headers page. Okay, so what I will see when I actually do have some page templates is that uh, I get another uh, section here which allows me to specify which template I want to use. Now the way that I get WordPress to recognize that template file as a template is I just put a little comment at the top of the file that looks something like this, like this bit of code that I've pasted here. So it's essentially a PHP snippet that contains just a comment and the comment contains template name colon and then whatever you want to call your template so if I want to call this template uh, no sidebar okay I can write it like that Okay, and once I've done that, if I come back to my page and look at the edit screen again, okay, WordPress now recognizes that I've got at least one template, so I can choose uh, what template I want to use. So this default template, if I leave it as that, and that's going to be the, the default setting, is going to again use the index.php template to render a page. But if I select one of my page templates, like no sidebar, then, now actually before I do that, I should probably add a link to this page just so that I can see it. Okay, so pages, uh, headers page. Okay, so just so that I can actually see this headers page, I'm gonna add it to my main menu here. Okay, I just linked my headers page. Okay, so this is my headers page. So as you can see, again, it's outputting using the default index template. But as soon as I go back to my pages and I edit that page and I select one of my page templates, hit update. Okay, now when I go, okay, you can see that it's applying that page template. So page templates are fairly unique in the way that you make WordPress recognize them. 
pretty much all of the other templates, WordPress recognizes them by the way that you name the file. But with page templates, WordPress recognizes it based on this PHP comment that you put at the top of the file. So if I want to, if I can create as many page templates as I want, all I have to do is uh, name it something else up here, and then obviously output the template code that I want to use for that. Now again, I have this uh, blank space here, so if I inspect with Firebug again, okay, I can see that as part of the body classes, it outputs as well as the page and the page with the ID. It outputs a class name, which is the name of the page template um, in its entirety here. So I can use that. to also target the main content section of my no sidebar page template in my CSS styles. So I essentially want this same style to apply, so all I'm going to do is add a comma and that same style again. So I'm going to say anything with that class and main content underneath that. Also apply this style to make the main content 100% uh, of the width. Okay, and there it is, again. So a combination of a new template and then some new styles which specifically target uh, that template using uh, the body class, the classes that the body class function outputs. Okay, so as I said, you can create as many page templates as you want. Um, all you need to do is make sure that you've got that comment up there. It starts with template name and then whatever you want to call it. And this name here is what will appear in the drop down list of templates. Okay, so that's page templates. Um, I've just got some screenshots demonstrating that. And the last lot of templates uh, that I'll go over is templates for different categories. So we can, uh, we can, okay, we have a bunch of different categories here as well. Okay, and we can create different templates to output the content within each category differently. And this might be especially appropriate for a portfolio because, as I said, you might have different content, you might have very visual content, you might have um, very text-based content, the best way of outputting that content might not necessarily be the same across different categories of your work. So you can apply different uh, templates to different categories as well. Now, the way that we do this is, um, unlike the page templates, again, it's important how we name the template file for the categories. If we want to create a category template, then we essentially need to name our template file category hyphen and then the name of the template. But when I say the name of the template, I don't exactly mean the name of the template, I specifically mean the category slug. So you may remember when we were looking at creating categories uh, for our posts uh, in previous weeks that Okay, so if I go to my post category section, okay, when we were creating a category, if we were using this interface, we gave it a name and then we gave it something called a slug, which is essentially a URL friendly version of the name. So as you can see over here, uh, I've got a bunch of different categories and I've got the name and I've got the slug and the slug is essentially the same as the name and a lot of these categories I created through the post interface, so I didn't actually manually enter a slug. So you notice that what WordPress does when it creates the slug for you is it names it the same as your category name, except that it makes everything lowercase and it replaces spaces with hyphens. So when you're naming a category file, you want to make sure you use the slug name and not the name of the category 
not that not the actual name of the category itself. And that's so that we can have file names that don't contain spaces and upper and lower case characters. So if I want to create a uh, category for um, my if I want to create a, a template for my graphic design category, then my then my template file is going to need to be called category hyphen and then graphic hyphen design .php. Okay, so um, so let's do that. File. So category hyphen. That's always the way that we start a category template file, and then the slug name of the category. All right, and again, just to be really quick, I'm going to just copy and paste my index template, and uh, let's just say so that we can see that something's changed. I'll just output a heading one at the top of the content section. Okay, so if this has worked, what we should be able to see is, okay, so this is something that wasn't there when it was rendering with the uh, index template. So again, if I rename this to something that doesn't start with category or something that's not that specific name, okay, it's gonna default back to using the index template. Okay, so that's a little bit confusing because this is in two categories, so let's, uh, oh, it doesn't matter, we'll use this one, this is the one we've used. Okay, so just, just so this is not confusing that this is the programming post inside of graphic design, if you recall last week, just to show you that you can put posts in multiple categories, okay, this programming post, because this was a Let's say this was a project where I did both programming and graphic design work on it, okay, that I put it in both categories and so it shows up uh, legitimately enough in both categories. Okay, so that's that's not a mistake, that's exactly how it should work. Okay, but to get back to the template file, so if it's not named correctly, it's using the index.php uh, template file. If I rename it back to how it should be and refresh, Okay, it's using the graphic design template file and outputting that heading there, which I didn't have in the index file. Okay, um, so that's essentially a category template. Now I'm going to create one more uh, category template for my photography section. So again, I'll just go back and double check what the slug is for my photography category, and it's just photography all in lower case. So if I want to create a template file for that, then it will be called category hyphen photography Okay, and this one, again, all I'm gonna do is remove the uh, sidebar. Okay, and there we go, sidebar remove, and I'm just going to do the same thing, target this body class that has category photography to make sure that the main content is styled at 100% of the width. So. Okay, so again, I'm just going to add another comma here and say category photography and content, apply the 100% width style. Okay, there it is.
Okay, so now I have a few different more specific templates. So I've got my index template which renders my home page and anything else where I don't have a more specific template for it. So some of these other categories. I have a page specific template which I've assigned to this headers page. Uh, and I've got category templates, separate category templates applied for graphic design category and photography category. Okay, so that's not all of the different types of templates that you can um, that you can create, and we could spend an entire semester on all of the different ones. But essentially, that's the same method that you use to create a template for uh, any specific piece of content for WordPress. So at this point, it might be good to just very briefly revisit this concept of the WordPress template hierarchy. So I showed this picture in, in a slide on my lecture on uh, WordPress and it's a big flow diagram looking thing. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to look. Okay, so essentially, so this is probably really confusing the first time you look at it, but hopefully this makes a little bit more sense now. So what this is, is kind of WordPress's, if WordPress was thinking, and if at the start you gave it a URL, this is its, this is its thinking pattern in order to decide what template to use to render a particular piece of content. So each one of these black boxes represents a different template file that you could create. So we can see ones that we can see certain ones that we have created, like category there and uh, single is there somewhere. Okay, and there's and you can see at the end here is index.php. So essentially, what WordPress does is it gets a URL and it goes, for example, okay, is it a single page? And if it's a single page, is it any of these other ones? And it has a way of deciding which template to use. And it looks, first of all, for the most specific ones. If it can't find them, it looks for a less specific one. And then finally, if there's no more specific template files, it defaults to using the index.php template to render all content. So you can see, for example, if we create... So for example, I have on the... I have this search widget here. And if I, if I do a search... Let's go... I know I've got an elephant in there somewhere, so if I search for elephant. Okay, so this URL is a search URL up here. Now, if we look at the template file, I can see that we could create a specific template for the search results. So if we wanted to output the search results in a different way, we could do that. But because I don't have a search template file, it's going, okay, you don't have one, I'm just going to use the index.php file, which you can see it's using the same template to render the search results as it does to render my home page and my blog posts. Okay, so there's nothing to stop you from adding these other template files if you need them, but that's that's the good thing about WordPress is that it gives you that flexibility to style things very specifically if you want to, but at the same time if you have no need for that, then you don't have to go through and create all of these template files if you don't need them. And that's why you can get away with a handful of templates like we have now. Or you can get away with just a single template, the index.php file. If, if you just have the one template that you want to use across all content on your site, and there's plenty of sites where that's perfectly legitimate, then you can just have that one template file. So you can see why we don't really have time to look at every individual template file uh, in detail. But if you do want to look at those more, um, and if you are finding there's, there's content sections of your site where you might want that sort of thing, then that template hierarchy document is a good place to look. And it will tell you what you need to name these files and what type of content that template will apply for. But the process is exactly the same as any of these other templates that we've just looked at. Okay, so I won't say any more about template files 
um, after that, I'll let you explore those uh, as, as you kind of require them. Um, okay, so we've looked at the WordPress body class. Okay, so what I want to look at now is a few ways where we can modify what actually gets output in terms of the content of our posts. So the first thing I'm going to look at is uh, something called post excerpts. So by default in our templates, okay, and actually before I go on, I'm just going to create a new, um, I'm just going to create one more category template for my blog. So category blog.php which again I'm going to base off my index template. <clears throat> okay, so just looking at the blog section now, <coughs> we can see in these templates that inside of the WordPress loop here, when it comes to outputting the content of the post, we're outputting uh, the title and then the content. So essentially what gets typed into the, the content editor window. Now we do have other options for outputting the content in slightly different ways. So with the content, the default way that it'll output is just to output all of the content. Uh, but you may have <coughs> very long posts, uh, in which case, uh, in which case it doesn't make a lot of sense to output all of the content of all of the posts on all the pages. Perhaps you just want to see uh, an, an overview of, of each post and then you want to click on one and then see the full content. So lots and lots of blogs uh, operate like that. Okay, so Smashing Magazine, for example. Okay, classic example, uh, all of their posts. Okay, they start off and give you a little bit of posts so you can quickly browse through them. And then they have a link to uh, let you view the rest of the posts. Okay, because most of their posts are quite long and involved, if they were to put this length of post on, uh, on the overview of all the posts in that category, then it's going to scroll for miles and miles and miles. <clears throat> okay, so there's a couple of ways that you can go about doing this. Uh, the first way is actually in how you uh, edit the post itself. So if I, let's have a look at, let's just choose, um, okay, let's choose this block quote post here that's in my blog category. Uh, and just a quick note on when, when you get lots and lots of posts, okay, it can get a little bit difficult to find them. So you can filter your post view by uh, different categories, for example. So if I just want to see the posts that are in my blog, okay, they are now just the posts that are in my blog category. So there's my block quote post, I'll go in and edit that. Okay, so let me just add a bit more content here. So this becomes a longer post. Okay, so this is quite a long post now. Well, it's, you know, comparatively it's not huge, but it's a longer post than it was. And I might decide that that's, that's probably too much for an overview of this post. So the first way I can create an excerpt is in the editor window, I choose uh, a location where uh, I want the post to be broken up and I insert a, um, I insert this thing called a more tag here. So there's this button here on the editor which looks like this. And if I click that, you can see it inserts a little, what looks like a little line break with a little more tag there. If we look at the HTML, you can see that really all this is doing is inserting an HTML comment with the word more. And WordPress knows to look for this comment, so you can enter that manually yourself, but knows to look for this comment 
and what it will do is if it finds that on any page where it's rendering multiple posts it will only output everything above the content here and it will not output anything below it unless you're viewing the, the single post by itself. So when I update that there, okay, I come back and refresh this, okay, and you can see that there's my post now is outputting only up to where that more tag was, and it's given me a link, which essentially links to the same, the same link that the title does, uh, just to the post, and I click on that, okay, and then it outputs the entire post itself. So that's one way of outputting an excerpt, and that allows you to control actually where the break happens. <clears throat> and you do have options for customizing the text that's actually output here. Um, uh, and you'll find, you'll find information about that on these links here. The second way is, uh, is actually forcing only the first little bit of content of any post uh, to output, regardless of whether it has uh, one of these more tags in it or not. So you may want to specify a category where you don't want to leave it up to the author to, to choose where the excerpt starts and stops. You might just want to have a category which only always outputs a certain little bit of a post. So the way that we can do that is essentially by using not outputting the content function, but outputting something called um, <coughs> the excerpt. Okay, so by changing in my category blog uh, template the content to the excerpt, let's just see what it does. Okay, so you can see that it shortened all of my posts. And if we, if we were to read the, <coughs> excuse me, if we were to read the uh, documentation about the excerpt, okay, it will basically tell you that the excerpt does. Uh, it does a couple of things. By default, it will take the first 55 characters of uh, the first 55 characters of the post, and then only output those. And then it will give you this little dot 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 down here. Let's try that again. Okay, but you also have the option of manually overriding that. So you may actually want to create an excerpt for the post which is different to any of the content in the post itself. You might want to actually write a little a little paraphrased expert of what a little overview of what the content of the post uh, is itself. So we can do that by um, and this is something which may not be visible by default what you want is an extra little pane down here on your edit post section called the excerpt. And if that's not visible, you can uh, make it visible by clicking on this screen options button here and then uh, the excerpt. Okay, and you can see it adds this down here. So by default, there's nothing in this. So WordPress reverts to just taking the first 55 words of the post, it uses the excerpt. But if you have anything in here, Okay, if you have something in here uh, as a manual excerpt, and I update that. Okay, and I refresh this. Okay, now WordPress goes, oh, okay, you've got a manual excerpt in there. We'll use that instead of the first 55 words. And for any of these other ones, because they don't have a manual excerpt specified, we'll just use, um, we'll just use the, the first 55 words. So that's useful because 
the first 55 words of a post might not be a good summary of what someone will find in that post. So you might want to write your own little brief descriptions of what people are going to find in that post for an overview like this. So that's what the manual excerpt is good for. But it's good because without changing the code, we don't have to change anything here. We, you still get that fallback to the, the first 55 words of the post if, um, if you don't specify a manual excerpt. Um, okay. So you do have options again for um, for customizing exactly how the the excerpt is output here, like this. So by default, it gives you these three little dots, um, and the information for all of this is in the links that I've provided. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste a little bit of code to save time. Um, okay, so you'll find this bit of code actually in um, the in the documentation as well, uh, and it tells you if you want to customize how the uh, excerpt is uh, output, then you just need to put a little bit of code in your functions.php file. And so we actually create a new function and then add a add a filter here and a filter is essentially something which looks for a WordPress event and then triggers a bit of code. Um, it's a little bit complex but all you really need to know for this one is just copy and paste the code example in the documentation and then you essentially, all you're interested here is changing this line to output um, whatever you want. And so in this case it's outputting a, it's outputting three dots, a link and then a link with an href and then outputting a link to the post itself and then um, the text of that link is going to be read more. So as soon as I've got that in there, okay, I hit refresh and there you can see that now at the end of my excerpts I get the three dots and then read more. Okay, and again you'll notice that that only applies to the uh, ones that don't use the manual excerpt. Uh, if you've got a manual excerpt, it's going to output the entirety of that manual excerpt, uh, no matter how long it is. Okay, so we'll move on uh, quickly. Okay, so that's post excerpt. So this is we've started to look at um, ways where you can overview content rather than bombarding the user with the entirety of the content all at once. Uh, it might be more useful, especially if it's something like a portfolio where someone's like someone's probably not going to trudge through every little detail of every project that you've done. They're probably going to want to look at an overview of all your work and then drill down to the ones that interest them. So excerpts is one part of that, uh, and then another useful um, tool is something called post thumbnails. Now I'm not going to go over this in a huge amount of detail because there's a fair bit of setup um, required to demonstrate this and it's just a bit time consuming. But I have uh, a recording of a detailed uh, demonstration of this that I've done earlier. So I'll demonstrate it quickly, but if you want more detail on this, I'll refer you to this um, video here, which I've already recorded, if you want to go and look at that later on. Essentially the idea of post thumbnails, and I'm going to talk about my photography section here. The idea of post thumbnails is that you can represent, again in an overview section of posts, you can represent uh, a post by a thumbnail image uh, rather than a bit of text. Uh, so this might be useful in the context of, of something very visual like a, a photography category or graphic design uh, or even web design, something like that where instead of listing all of the posts like this, it's one after the other, this doesn't give me a very good overview of anything. So what I'd really rather prefer to do for, um, for, for this photography section is to have a little, little image that's indicative of what, what I might find in each of these photography projects and then display them in some way that's easy to see them as an overview and then I can link click on any one of those and, and 
and then view any single one of these uh, photography posts. So the idea of this is I might have a bunch of different photo shoots. This one, um, I've just used um, the OSX uh, default desktop backgrounds. So um, not, not trying to claim that these are my photographs at all, disclaimer. Um, but let's just say that this was a particular photo shoot at where I went on safari. So I've got some photos that are all related to a particular photo shoot. And in the full post, I want to display all these photos. Now, I'd probably display this in some sort of nice light box gallery, but that doesn't matter. The, the point is, the, the content of this post is probably going to be a bunch of photos and then maybe some accompanying text which says a little bit about uh, the project itself. But that's, so that's quite a lot of content and if I'm looking at an overview section then that's a bit overwhelming. It's hard to see the entirety of what my portfolio looks like in this context. So what I really want is something that looks more like what you can see in this screenshot of the video here. I actually just want maybe one of the, one of the images from each photo shoot output as a little thumbnail which then links to each of those individual posts. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to refer to this link here to the WordPress documentation on the post thumbnails. Now, the first thing we need to do is similar to some of the other things we've done like custom menus is we need to enable uh, or we need to tell WordPress that our theme is going to be supporting post thumbnails. So the way that we do that is to add a little bit of code again to our functions.php file. Okay, and it's this one here. It's just a call to the function add theme support and then pass in the string post thumbnails. Okay, again, where I add this doesn't really matter uh, in terms of the order of where I put things in the, in the functions file, so I'm just going to add it to the end here. So, so I should uh, just show you what it looks like without that. So. Let's now go to, I'm going to go to my post and I'm just going to look at my photography section. Okay, so, um, actually I'll just backtrack a little bit. You do, you'll notice that I've already put some of this content in so that I don't have to kind of waste time doing it now. I'll just mention briefly that uh, if you want to upload a lot of media content at once rather than going through post by post and, and uploading it as you go, uh, you can, there's a media section in the back end here where you can actually um, just upload a bunch of uh, media all at once. So as you can see I've got a, a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of uh, images here. So So I'm just going to create a, a new post. Uh, okay, I'm going to create a new post in my uh, photography section. Okay, so let's. I'm going to click the insert media button. So I could up upload uh, the the image file uh, through this interface here as well, um, but to access any of the stuff in your media library that you've already uploaded previously, I'm just going to click over to this link over here, and let's grab something that I haven't used yet. Uh, let's get this frog. <coughs> Okay, so I've got a frog here. Um, I'm going to insert frog into the post. Uh, I'm just going to edit this a little bit. And I'm going to set the width of this image to 100% of the post so it fits nicely. And. Okay.
okay, and then I can add whatever text in. I could add other images as well. I'm gonna make sure that I put this in my photography section. Okay, and for now, that's all I'm gonna do. And I'm going to publish that post. <coughs> Except I should uh, give it a title. Okay, now let's refresh this and make sure it shows up. Okay, so there, I've added another post to my uh, photography section. Now, what I need to do is if I want to output, <coughs> if, if I want to post thumbnail for a post, then I need somewhere to specify that. And that should come up down here, but again, it's not going to show up until we've actually uh, enabled that by putting that add theme support post thumbnails in our functions.php file. So as soon as I've done that and I've saved that, if I refresh this page again, okay, you can see down here that we get another little pane called featured image. So we can set the featured image and anytime we uh, insert an image, we can choose that to be the featured image as well. But an important thing to note is your featured image doesn't actually have to be an image from your post itself. So while it does make sense in this context to use uh, the, fe the, the same image, the same featured image, uh, or the same image of the frog as the featured image of the post, um, there's no technical requirement that it has to be the same image. Okay, and so there'll be a link whether you upload the file or select it from your media library, you'll find a link here to use as the featured image. Once you do that, okay, uh, save that. Okay, you'll notice that it comes up down here as the featured image. Okay, so now that that's set for this post, what I can do is I can output that anywhere by using uh, some uh, some of WordPress's uh, template tags or function calls. So I'll update that again and externally it doesn't, doesn't make my post look any different okay? because I haven't output the post thumbnail. But what it allows me to do now that it has a featured image is to output that featured image as a post thumbnail uh, in a template if I so choose. So just to show you that I've already set up all of these other ones to also have featured images. I'll just show you one other one. So for example, let's see, this, this one which has a couple of, couple of images in it. Okay, so this is an example which has multiple images and I've chosen one of those to be the featured image. Okay, but I've pre-set up all of these photography posts to have a featured image. Okay, so what I can do now is come over here to my photography category template and okay, so the code that I want again, I can essentially just copy and paste the snippet from uh, from this section here. Okay, so I'm going to use this uh, default example down here, and well, actually, so let's go super simple, and I'm just going to use I'm just going to use the most simple case first of all. Uh, so what I want to do first of all for my photography category is not actually output the content at all. What I want to do is output um, the post thumbnail. And the way I do that is using this function the underscore post underscore thumbnail. Okay, and I 
Okay, there we go. So it's obviously not quite finished yet, but you can see that at the very least, it's not outputting the entire post content anymore. Okay, it's not outputting that text and it's not outputting multiple images where it exists. All it's outputting is what I told it to, the title, and then the post thumbnail itself. Now, obviously, these are way too big to be useful post thumbnails, so I need a way of specifying uh, what size I want the thumbnail to output at. And the way that I do that, again, you can find uh, examples of this on, um, on the documentation, is we can specify an array which takes uh, a width value and a height value. So what I'm going to do is, inside of these Inside of this function call, I'm going to say array. And then inside of here, it's, I'm going to give it two values. And it's going to be a, a width and a height. So let's say I want each of these thumbnails to fit within a 250 by 250 pixel square. Then I'll just pass it 250 for width and 250 for height. Okay, and now when it's output, each of these images is going to fit its longest dimension, whether it's height or the width, within a bounding square of, of those specified dimensions. So if I want to make that bigger, say so I want to make it 300, 300, okay, it can do that, and now the post thumbnails fit within that size. So obviously you're going to determine this by designing your layout so that you figure out how many fit nicely uh, in that layout. Um, but essentially, essentially, as far as, as technically what the code has to be, that's, that's all you have to do is, is use the post thumbnail and then specify a thumbnail size. So I'm going to skip over the, the styling stuff because uh, that takes a little bit of time and I do go into detail it detail of it in this video here, but I'll just enable the styles which now output, uh, which now display uh, that content in the way that I in, in the way that I want. So I'm obviously not finished. I'd, I'd rather have these display in a sort of a grid um, with some sort of photography looking styling. So I've got those styles already in my style sheet here. I just have them commented out. Okay, but if you look at my styles, you can see, again, I'm just using the body class to target uh, the main content with the category photography, and then the, cat and then the photography post, and then the post heading and, and stuff within that. Okay, but all of these styles here, allow okay, my post to be output like this. So I haven't touched anything between that refresh and the template, I've just changed some CSS styles. So these are still outputting posts within a loop. All I'm doing is instead of outputting the content, I'm outputting the post thumbnail and, uh, and I'm styling the heading and, and the background of the post in a different way so that it looks like this. And because I'm targeting the category Photography, it doesn't affect any of my other categories here like this. Okay, so um, the other, the only other thing that I, I would change to the uh, template here is um, just to add another link here uh, to output um, the perma link of the post. around my post thumbnail so that I can click on any of these images and it will take me to the single post image for any of these. Okay, so that's post thumbnail. So as you can see, we didn't actually have to change a lot and we're still using the concept of outputting posts and outputting headings and things like that. It's just the fact that we've got a, a different template and we're applying different styles to those posts 
uh, that it, it now doesn't really look like a blog. It looks more like a gallery. And so this is a, a in my opinion anyway, for, for something like that's very visual like this, this gives me a much quicker overview of the, of the entirety of, of the work in this section of my portfolio. And so I can much quickly go, oh yeah, like look at this one, let's, let's go in and have a look at that one in more detail without having to scroll through pages and pages of really detailed content. So again, the important thing to remember here is the, the layout of each of these templates should really um, be influenced by the type of content that goes in here, not the other way around. You shouldn't come up with the, you shouldn't come out up with the layout first and then try and make the content fit it. You should think about the kind of content that's going in there and then go, okay, what, what layout uh, is going to, uh, is going to communicate about this section of content uh, the most effective, in the most effective way. <coughs> okay, um, Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is um, pagination. So uh, eventually you're going to have enough posts that uh, they're just going to run off the end of the screen. Uh, or they're, they're not actually because what you'll notice is that once you've got uh, more than 10 posts uh, in any outputting on any one page is that it's only going to output the first 10 posts. So you're going to run into a point where you need to, um, where you need to deal with that. So so older posts don't just get, get lost, people can still browse and navigate to those. So this is where the concept of, of pagination happens. So even on, even on my blog here, okay, if I just look at the home page, even though the way that my posts output, they output the entire content, so each page is quite long, if you were to count these, you'll notice that it actually only outputs 10 posts. Now I have hundreds of posts, so I know there's more there to it. So what, what you want is um, the ability to have, have links to click on more posts. And the idea of that is called um, pagination. So there's a few ways that you can go about that. You can add it manually to your theme. And I've got a good link here on how you can do that. And this one here takes you through uh, all the different options uh, in good detail. But essentially, uh, there's two things that you want to look at. The first is a setting in your admin settings. And uh, I think it's under the reading. Yeah. Okay, so under the reading settings, the same place where you define the static front page, there's a option here which says blog pages show at most and then x number of posts. So as you can see the default value there is 10. Uh, if I was to drop this down to 6 say, then go back to my blog section here. Okay, I, I do have more than six posts in my blog, but you can see that it's only outputting the most recent six. Now, a simple option to fix this is to just, just go in and say, well, I'll just output a thousand or a hundred posts and then you never have to worry about it. And if you have a good idea of that, you're not ever gonna have more than a certain number of posts on your page, then that, that's fine. Um, but if you're gonna have something like a, a blog where you're um, constantly updating and you've got very old content that you retain, then you're probably going to not want to display a thousand posts on a single page. So if I want, so if I want to have uh, links on this page to allow me to, to see all the posts, then um, all I really need to do is, and there's a few different examples of how you can output uh, this stuff here. Um, Okay, and so I give some simple examples, and then um, I kind of like this one under a better solution, which actually shows you how many pages of posts you have and allows you to link 
each individual page rather than just going previous to next. And so really all you need to do is uh, copy this bit of code here that it gives you in the example. And so I'm just going to apply this to my blog template. And let's say after my loop, okay, so I only want this to output after my after all my posts are, are output, I don't want this to output with every post. So I'm going to make sure it's uh, after the end of my WordPress loop, but still inside of my main content div. I'm just going to uh, paste this bit of code. Make sure that it's in PHP tags, and with a bit of luck. Okay, all I need to do is refresh the page and you can see it's outputting the uh, links down here to show me that I have two pages worth of links. So I've got somewhere between uh, 7 and, and 12 posts and then it's giving me a link to go to the next page or I can click on each of these individual pages. Okay, and there's the previous page. Uh, if I was to change this reading section, uh, this this here, let's say I make it something really small like two, just so that I can see that it adds extra pages down here. Okay, so now it's outputting two posts per page, and it's telling me I've got five pages of posts. So if I go on page three, then I have uh, then I have links to previous and next ones. Okay, so there's a few different options for that. Um, I'll mainly refer you to that um, page where I just. Um, copied that code from um, because that goes through pretty much all the examples and then of course this can be output with various different classes so you can target those in your CSS with styles just like you targeted anything else you can start it any way you want really. Uh, if you want even more flexibility there are um, as usual There are, as usual, plugins to do this kind of thing as well. So, um, for example, this one, WP Paginate, where it gives you a bit more flexibility over that. Um, and another, another quick side note is that, that this, this, um, this value here uh, is going to apply to all of your categories. So what you'll notice is that, um, What you'll notice is that uh, it's kind of messed up my photography category here. It's only outputting two as well. Now I could paginate this as well, but because these are outputting so small, then it makes sense to allow more posts on this page than on the blog page. So if you want more flexibility over that as well, then there's plugins that allow you to do that as well. There's this one here that I found called Post Per Category. Okay, which if you look at the screenshots, uh, will give you an admin section which allows you to list your categories and say how many posts should be output for each of those individual categories. So I could say that I want uh, five posts to output at a time for my blog, but I want uh, maybe nine to output at a time for my um, photography section. So I get a nice grid of three by three gallery for that. Okay, so that is where I'm going to leave that. Um, there's a lot of extra detail in those uh, links that I've provided you and this um, screencast here, particularly on the post thumbnails. Uh, if you want to look into that. Um, but I think that's a good overview. And I think now with all of that knowledge, you're pretty much armed with um, at least all of the techniques to pretty much develop uh, any kind of site in WordPress that you want now.